is a hop-on, hop-off bus company servicing Peruvian cities between Lima and Cusco. We hopped between seven cities and towns over nine days, passing through ocean, desert, and mountains along the way. After an overnight bus, we arrived before dawn of day five in Arequipa. We booked this hotel for two nights through the Peru Hop website, and after crashing in our room for a few hours, we spent the rest of the morning at the free breakfast buffet and walking around the colonial era hotel building. The view from the rooftop was pretty good too. Arequipa's old town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Established by the Spanish in 1540, it's known as the White City from the white volcanic stone quarried from the surrounding area. The Plaza de Armas and adjoining cathedral are the heart of the old city, built on top of the original Inca temple and plaza, as the Spanish did with all of their major colonial settlements. But the architecture is gorgeous, and the majestic Vulcan Misty provides a stunning backdrop. Another notable building is the nearby Jesuit Chapel. Built in 1698, its elaborate high Baroque style sets it apart. Another reason to visit Arequipa is, in a word, alpacas. Quechua women in town earn money by letting you hold baby alpacas. They are so adorable and their wool is so soft. But Alpaca World on the edge of Old Town gives a much better understanding of alpacas, llamas, and their wild cousins, Wakanos and Vicuñas. Originating in what's now the American West 40 to 45 million years ago, camelids spread west to Asia and Africa and south to the Andes Mountains. Domesticated over 5,000 years ago, llamas and alpacas are integral to the Quechua way of life used for labor, food, and clothing. Wool is sorted by hand, dyed with natural dyes, and woven by hand. The items for sale in the shop after the tour are gorgeous and expensive. But the artisanal shops in Old Town have other beautiful options for the more budget conscious. Day seven of our Peru hop adventures started before dawn and we were back on the road as the sun rose behind Volcan Misti. Altitude sickness can be a real problem visiting Peru. Arequipa at over 7,500 feet was our first exposure to high elevation here. Gradual acclimation is the best way to adjust and Peru hop from Lima is a great way to do that. Living in Colorado for 11 years, we learned a lot about altitude sickness. But in Peru, coca leaves are the standard. Arequipa hotels have a ready supply of raw leaves and coca tea, and stores sell coca tablets and candy. And we were heading even higher. passing herds of llamas along the way. We made a pit stop at Lake Lagunillas. At 14,444 feet above sea level, it was the highest point of our journey. The Quechua people are truly at home here, and I tried what I would drink every remaining morning in Peru, coca leaves and coffee. Moving on, we descended into the Andean Plateau, the most extensive high altitude plateau on earth outside Tibet. It's the domain of llamas, alpacas, and the Quechua, who all have genetic adaptations to the very low oxygen environment. Our destination was Puno, the largest city on Lake Titicaca. The largest lake in South America Titicaca straddles the Peru-Bolivia border. We went straight to another tour that we had booked through Peru Hop. Though I had actually booked the wrong tour weeks before, but we were able to change it with the help of our on-bus Peru Hop guide. 
At 12,500 feet surface elevation, Titicaca is the highest navigable lake in the world, and the lake is a key part of the lives of the people around it. And our local boat guide made clear that it's pronounced Kaka and not Kaka. One ethnic group lives on the water, about five kilometers from Puno, surrounded by reeds. The Uru people live as they have for over a thousand years, on hand-built floating islands. Their origin is shrouded in legend. Supposedly they came from the Amazon rainforest and were never welcomed by the Quechua and others who were already here. So they moved onto the water as protection from their hostile neighbors. Several hundred Uru people live on about 100 islands, and they rotate which ones receive tours. We were the guests of the president of one island, and we got a demonstration of how their homes are built. Using reeds harvested from the surrounding area, these islets last around 25 years. And while they're sturdy enough, for sure, they are clearly floating. We were then invited into one of their homes. The Uru have cell phone service and solar power with some battery storage, but they live a subsistence existence. One family per hut, and tourism is the primary source of money. We boarded one of their ceremonial reed boats and had a musical send-off from some of the women. The finale was very familiar. <laughs> After a short tour of the area, we docked at another island that had more substantial houses, a water tower, and outhouse. Heading back to Puno at sunset, we had time to grab a quick dinner in town before catching another overnight bus to Cusco. Ending our Peru hop adventure, but not our time in Peru. <laughs>